my beautiful lemon tree. So this is some of my tree species I've just planted in the last five months, guys. Oh, I can't think of this one now, it's on the tip of my tongue. It's not native to West Australia, so it's a, it's a eastern state. Oh, it's a Currajong tree. So these are all Currajong saplings coming up, guys. It's got native um, grasses growing. A lot, I'm still waiting for them to germinate. I'm not that confident. Some, you know, I think it's getting to the stage where if I can't see any germination, they're not coming up. But I have had some success. Um, yeah, we'll go around. Is it nice species here? Unsure, guys. I should have wrote it down. <laughs> Bloody forget. So lazy sometimes. But these are all native saplings coming up. What I'll be planting in my yard. These ones here are new ones. But yeah, I have had a lot of success growing seeds and so forth, guys. Oh, here's a beautiful banksia coming up there. That one there is a little baby banksia coming up. So I'll show you another banksia right here. So this is a beautiful banksia right there, guys. I've got to... Hold on. So there's a, I've got about six of these growing in my backyard. Banksias, like those yellow flowers you saw before. These will grow to about probably six to eight metres high. Beautiful area I'm working on right here, guys. All this grass is all rubbish dump vines. A lot of the trees and plants I find are rubbish dump vines. Or no, try and keep native. Just over here is a couple of um, some pots that I've just planted with. Um, oh, I can't think right now. <laughs> oh, it'll come back to me, guys. Some eucalypt species and, and a, some acacia species, but the name will come to me in a minute. So these are going to be planted with my beautiful new sandalwood trees that I've growing and successfully germinated. So sandalwood trees and uh, Kwangdong trees, they need a host. So those acacia species, what I'm growing, some are going to be planted here. Because if they haven't got a host, fellas, they'll die. So they need a host for, their, for the actual sandalwood or Kwangdong uh, tree for the root to latch onto the host. And that's the only way the sandalwood or Kwangdong will survive. So here's a couple of seeds, that one there, that one there's a sandalwood, and this one's a kongdong. So it's still got the skin on. So that's what the kongdong seed looks like. And to germinate them guys, I soaked them in, I um, got a hacksaw, hacksawed a little crack in them, soaked them in water overnight, and then just planted them, and they grew. Got heaps of them coming up, fellas, and all these round containers. There's another new pond here. This one's dry at the moment. Heaps of nice water grasses. Another acacia species I'm trying to grow. These are clones. So I've actually pruned these off a beautiful acacia tree. Dip the roots in honey, stripped most of the leaves off. Uh, dipped the actual stalk in honey, planted it, and hopefully I can uh, successfully grow these clone acacia wattle trees. Because if they do successfully grow, I'm going to plant them along this fence here. Just to block off that fence and for privacy and so forth. So I collect heaps of... Uh, once again, out rubbish dumps, guys. A lot of people chuck out when they're pruning eucalypt trees and all different other tree species. I collect all the logs and so forth for homes for 
lizards and geckos and spiders and moths and frogs and all that kind of stuff so I lay them around my yard and that way it creates homes for all the insects and so forth and geckos more sandalwood trees growing there fellas oh that's right it's a jam tree so these ones that I just showed you before guys plus and these ones are gonna be jam tree acacia acuminata is what it's called acuminata acacia acuminata so it's a native to the great southern and west Australia absolutely beautiful tree grows probably around seven meters high and creates a beautiful shady type environment so eventually guys I'm just going to create a huge canopy in my backyard full of beautiful native great southern west australian trees beautiful uh, bottle brush so these everything's just coming to flower now guys because of spring and this is an area what I'm building up underneath this is uh, all big logs and bark and tree roots uh, it's called Hugel culture it's a German thing so I'm building up this area here and underneath all this mound is all logs and so forth but eventually this is going to go right through the back of my yard it's going to be nice so more places for frogs this is my beautiful apricot tree it's absolutely loaded with apricots guys So I've got apricots, peaches, nectarines, uh, lemon, mandarin, orange. And it's my nectarine tree there. Last year it got really badly affected by fruit fly. So another tip guys to control fruit fly is what do you reckon's in those tins of uh, old cat food fellas? My own urine. So it's a good way of controlling fruit fly is we in some tins also we in some, I'm going to make some milk bottles hang the milk bottles from trees fill them up with urine it's a good way to control the fruit fly so lemon trees nice lemons on it guys so a lot of my old subscribers might notice a big difference in my backyard like I say fellas, it's going to be absolutely beautiful when it's all finished. Like a massive canopy of trees covering my whole yard, creating beautiful shade, privacy. It will cool down my house, um, create a beautiful ecosystem full of birds and nesting and so much more. Seclusion. That's my beautiful uh, Port Jackson fig tree. That is huge. Uh, my my mate, I was always worried about that tree falling, but my mate Dale, uh, he's an organic farmer, actually visiting Dale today, he said there's no way that tree will ever fall, nor live for 100, 200 years. It's about probably, uh, I reckon, probably 40 years of age now. It's huge, fellas, it's absolutely beautiful. So you're probably wondering why all these star pickets are in the ground, all these wooden stakes, well that's where all my trees are. All my trees and native grasses are the reason I've got these here guys is so the dogs don't when they're running don't come and destroy my trees because it did happen when I first started planting them so nice will be acacia wattle type species tree that one there's a new pond as well full of baby tadpoles and frogs um, another pond here Beautiful pond there, all full of frogs and tadpoles. Scrap or oh, nippers getting hungry, he's squawking. There's another pond here, fellas. We're approaching my veggie garden. It's hoping that we'd see a frog. They usually come out about right now and do a bit of sun baking, especially in this one. I see them quite often. So in this pond here is just a copper insert, fellas. I'll show you what a copper insert is. 
Um, so it's just a nice copper insert with an old wagon wheel covered in beautiful rocks. It's a beautiful, um, this tree here is a swamp she-oak. I planted around probably 30 of these trees in my yard. And these are one of my favourite trees because when the wind goes through them it makes a beautiful haunting noise through the little pine-like leaves. So these will live to over a hundred years of age as well. Um, so all these ones here fellas are all swamp she-oaks. So I'm doing my washing today. And right here guys is uh, more of the jam trees. Also a lot of these jam trees I'm and all the sandalwood trees that I'm growing and Kwangdong trees, I'm reintroducing re them into areas around my town that are really struggling due to land clearing, salinity and so forth. So these have only just been planted in the last week. Nice acacia trees, jam tree, acacia acuminata, another little bat home, rubbish dump finds. Lanterns, rubbish dump finds. I find so much good stuff for the garden guys for out the rubbish dump. Be heading out there very shortly. These ones are nectarine seedlings, what I'm growing from this nectarine tree. Another little pond there. My mandarin tree. Got some baby mandarins on it. Probably around April is when it gets loaded with beautiful mandarins. All right, guys, got some bad news. I gave up smoking for a year and a half, and I've started smoking again. Time for a cigarette. Life's pretty boring when you don't smoke or drink, guys. I haven't had a drink now for oh, 10 years. Gave up drinking 10 years ago. Gave up smoking a couple of, probably three years ago for a year and a half. Saved probably over $10,000, guys. Things got a little bit tough for me about a year and a half ago. Had a few things happen to me. Nothing major. But like I say, life is pretty boring when you don't smoke or drink. So I started smoking again. Guys, guess how much a packet it is in Australia, where I come from. Bloody $40 a packet of 25 cigarettes. What a rip off. And look at all, you know, I'm trying to go healthy, organic. And I'm smoking. I'll give it up again soon, guys, because I just can't afford to waste $40 a day on cigarettes. For a packet of... no, oh, everything's so expensive anyway. But anyway, let's do a bit of a tour of my veggie garden. So before I start, guys, a lot of my old subscribers know this is the area here where I planted like a big olive oil drum full of all different seeds. Well, I didn't have much luck, but they're probably still coming up. But I have noticed a few little trees coming up. Right here is a beautiful tree coming up from when I spread all the seeds. Another acacia wattle species. Unsure what this one is. But yeah, got heaps of carrot. These ones are carajong when I spread all the seeds. Carajong. But all these other grasses and all that are ones I've introduced into my yard from, and they're all native to my town. This one here, fellas, is another species of the Geraldton Wax. Beautiful purple type flower. Smells like lemon if you rub it together between your hands. Some nice native grasses here, guys. I know I'm pretty boring, you guys. Another sandalwood tree coming up here. There's another one over there. So, carrot, so like I said, they need a host, so the sandalwood tree can either use a native grass as a host, citrus trees like lemon, orange, um, but also other species like acacia species, and so much more. But like I say guys, you know, it's not just the last five months I've been working in my backyard, it's been probably over ten years now that I've been slowly working in my backyard, but the last five months I've done so much. I've achieved so much guys, it's looking absolutely beautiful. Another five to ten years guys and it's going to be a paradise. It's literally going to be a beautiful paradise. Full of self-sufficiency. 
So let's start over here, potatoes, got heaps and heaps of potatoes growing. So I do a big potato rotation, usually plant potatoes probably once a month. So I've got a all year round supply of potatoes. It's one of my beautiful olive trees here. This will be loaded with olives very shortly. So like I say, potato rotation. And I let them kind of, when they're ready, I let them, or the leaves die off. And then I cover them like this so it doesn't get wet. And I just dig up potatoes as I need them. Um, let's dig up a few now, guys, to show you. All right. This one. That one might be... Hold on guys, so this, this one's full of potatoes, yep, there you are, look, so these ones are covered so I can just take them when I need them, it's a big one, oh, this one's huge, oh no, look at that guys, beautiful, so just cover them and get them when I need them. Rubbish dump finds, guys, full of rich gravy mix. Guess what I'm using that for? Compost. I'll show you my compost the other day. I find so much stuff. All these containers, what I've got, are all rubbish dump finds, guys. Everything is rubbish dump finds. Everything's free. So, so got some garlic growing here and onions. Got heaps of onions, garlic, more potatoes. Some beautiful broccoli, fellas. Some beautiful broccoli, spinach, rhubarb, celery. All oh, this is organic seeds, guys, from edenseeds.com.au. Some shallots. Some nice shallots. So I haven't had to spend any money on vegetables for the last probably six months, except for the occasional white onion, um, certain other things, what I need for salads and cooking. But I've hardly spent any money on vegetables. This is the remains of my other broccoli. I can still eat that. I can still eat the beautiful stalks and eat the leaves for salads. So everything's edible. Onions here. There's all garlic in here. What I've just planted. Parsley. Beautiful parsley. Organic guys. Like I say, edenseeds.com.au This is the leftovers of my coriander. So this was like this parsley at one stage. Um, more potatoes there. So I had heaps of beautiful broccoli, more broccoli here, another species of broccoli. Um, you need all the leaves too, fellas. More, uh, probably, ah, uh, sorry, cauliflower there, celery. It's nice beetroot. Let's rip open a beetroot, eh? We'll get a big one. So before I start guys, you can also eat all these leaves, for salads, soups, so everything is edible. So look at this beautiful one here, we'll pull it out live. There you are. Look at that guys, beautiful. We'll be making some nice pickled beetroots very soon. My garden is literally full of millions of worms. I'll show you my worms. They're everywhere, fellas. Spinach in here. Rhubarb. The red stuff's rhubarb. That's good for making cakes and porridge. Add it to your cereals. Spinach, beautiful spinach. This old bathtub here is full of new potatoes. Uh, beans. These beans here, fellas, I found... From 1982, there was a school, um, out the rubbish dump, a, um, a kid's science experiment kit full of uh, all different seeds. 
and it had on it 1982 and these beautiful beans are from just probably three seeds what I found I'll show you hold on sorry look at that those beautiful beans guys you cook those add them to your salads soups stews curries casseroles and you can eat the skin raw but yeah mainly the beans um, found a big bag of onions a couple of days ago at the rubbish dump fellas once again and I planted them I'll show you see this oh, I'll try and find a spot for worms but anyway I don't want to disturb these onions but yeah so I found a big bag of onions what had sprouted so I cut off the tops where they'd sprouted planted them free onions guys so I've got these in this this cooler box and I'll let those ones sprout as well um, <clears throat> what else here I don't know what's in there guys no, nothing's in here I was gonna see if there's any I'm trying to find some worms for you anyway we'll find some so beautiful red cabbage guys, the salads, coleslaw, so much more. Spinach again, got about four different species of spinach. So I've been totally self-sustainable fellas with all my veggies. So easy guys, so easy to grow your own. Also here is more coriander, what I'm growing, coriander. As you can see in my yard when I've given you guys a tour, there's hardly any weeds in my yard guys so I've done so much weeding this year my, my yard is basically free of weeds more potatoes here another species of bean got to pick these today because some of them are drying out um, Eden Seeds got those ones from potatoes in here guys and let's keep going here are the beautiful birds Right, so you can see hardly any weeds. I've managed to kill off most of my grass. That bird case here is an aviary I'm working on for animal rescues, birds. I'm even thinking about turning it into a greenhouse covered in bubble wrap or something like that to grow stuff in for an experiment. This is my weeding box. So hardly any weeds in my yard, guys. Bird feeding areas. So I've been in this house now for about probably 40 years and my mum had a beautiful garden, not as good as mine. Um, but yeah, so there's still a few things left over from my mum, my mum. Beautiful roses and hibiscus plants and other stuff. Right here guys, planting some ginger today. Planting some nice ginger. Uh, here is more um, jam trees right here is some um, avocados I'm growing I'll show you a couple of the avocados so all the junk you see lying around too guys it's all rubbish dump finds and it's all for a reason so there's an avocado there toothpick soak them in water and there's actually a leaf in the middle of that these are sweet potatoes I'm trying to germinate I planted these about a or had these in the water now for about a week so I'll grow some beautiful homegrown sweet potato uh, some of the stuff I buy from the grocery store just so it's you know it's some of it you can't get off the internet due to West Australia's strict quarantine laws so I um, just get stuff from the supermarkets and try and grow sweet potato corns another thing I can't get corn off the internet West Australia's really strict with um, their environmental regulations. Right here, more jam trees. These ones here had sandalwood nuts in them. I don't think they're going to come up. I'll show you my successful germinations. So these are all sandalwood trees here. What are coming up? What I'll be planting in my yard. Um, and also reintroducing to areas that are struggling. 
unsure what this one is. Uh, sandalwood's really quite rare in our area because it was basically decimated in the early 1900s for the sandalwood cutters. It's used in perfume and the wood. So sandalwood's one of the main ingredients in a lot of perfumes. This is a beautiful eucalypt it's from seeds I've grown. So it's a beautiful feeling too guys when you manage to get these seeds actually to germinate. This one here I'm unsure of. Unsure what that one is. But yeah, it's a really nice feeling when you see these all your hard work pay off. So with these sandalwoods, like I say guys, I need to plant some um, acacia seeds. I've got them soaking in water at the moment, the jam trees. So I'm going to plant probably two acacia trees seeds in these, just so these sandalwood trees and kwangdong trees have got a host to live off. Alright, so this is going to be my summer vegetable seedlings. So all these ones here are corn, corn, pumpkin, zucchini. Planted these probably around seven days ago, guys, and these will be getting planted into these big old rainwater tanks once again. Rubbish don't find. So it'll be creating a beautiful summer veggie patch over there. Zucchini, crystal apple cucumber, Richmond River green apple cucumber, jar pumpkin. Uh, bait alpha cucumber, Jaredale pumpkin, heart of gold rock melon, cucumber, uh, muncher burpless, rock melon, hail's best, Waltham butter pumpkin, watermelon crimson sweet, uh, what's that one? Uh, capsicum, capsicum Californian, ca ca Californian capsicum wonder, tomato gross less. Tomato Mayo Indian, Tomato Palm Woods, Tomato Licast de Apul Apulia, Tomato Roma, Tomato Garden Peach, Chili Cayenne, so, and uh, more tomatoes there, guys, and some more coriander right here. Got a couple of species of onions growing, red onion, white onion, salad onions, carrots, and so this is going to be my summer vegetable patch guys. That's a huge big composting drum full of all my food scraps. Um, so it's going to look really really nice guys. Uh, so yeah, that's basically the tour of my backyard. We'll go over here, show you this is my uh, also my water recycling setup. That's this is where some of that grass at the beginning of the video is going to be planted inside this to turn my washing machine water into nice healthy water for my garden. So these are big chemical drums here, full of water for my garden, guys, fruit trees and so forth. Uh, so I've just got a hose connected to my washing machine. All the grey water runs into these containers. And I can just, I've got a set up where I just connect my hose to this. Then I water my, all my garden with all that water. Mainly my fruit trees, guys. <coughs> all of my, um, all of my brand new trees and native grasses and all my vegetable garden is watered with beautiful fresh rainwater. So, so all of this is one of my rain, this is another one of my olive trees. So this is how I capture my water guys. I will be setting up one of those big rainwater chemical drums here to capture water very soon. But I've just got a gutter where it drips, runs down off my shed roof there and it fills up this with water. And once again, it's got kerosene in it for mosquito control. And these wheelie bins and other drums are also full of water, rainwater, from that gutter there. So I'm getting these down pipes fixed soon, guys. But yeah, and it's got that layer there, kerosene, kerosene. So we've got heaps of rainwater, guys, to capture. 
that drum's full of rainwater, so it's that 44 gallon drum. These boxes here I'll be making into beautiful bat homes one day, bird boxes, and so much more. Also that tree there guys, that's a beautiful Tagazasti tree, that is absolutely beautiful. It's not native to West Australia, it comes from the Canary Islands, the Tagazasti tree. So very soon it'll be dropping tens of thousands of seeds on, upon my vegetable garden. So I get probably a couple of hundred of these seeds will germinate all around my yard and um, yeah. I pull them out, but there's a one that I've left. What I'm thinking about grow, letting to grow. This here is also a beautiful macadamia nut tree, what I brought from a nursery. So beautiful, homegrown macadamia nuts. So yeah, here's a little tagasasti tree growing right here, guys. So this one here will eventually look like that beautiful one what I just showed you then. That one there, beautiful shady tree, but unfortunately it just drops tens of thousands of leaves, and, or not leaves, seeds. Also drops a lot of leaves and everything else. So I haven't raked for about a couple of months, guys, so all the beautiful rakings from the leaves of this fig tree and all my other trees go into my vegetable garden for compost and so forth. So, can you see my yard's changed quite a bit since you fellas have last seen it. And this beautiful Morden or Port Jackson fig tree, there's another species called the Morden Bay fig, creates absolutely beautiful shade. So, like I say, a lot of the junk laying around, guys, is all rubbish dump finds. Beautiful chair. <coughs> and that grass they're growing there. It's the same as the one what I've built up over there from all the other grass that I've found for the rubbish dumps and so forth. So everything's got a use. Everything's got a use, even hubcaps and you name it, guys. I try and recycle everything for my garden from an old beer keg, turn it into a beautiful spot for birds to drink out of water. There's another one just there. But yeah, so eventually I just want to cover this back fence here. You can see the house over there. I want total seclusion, so I want this beautiful fence there covered in that beautiful acacia trees or an acacia type hedge tree. It's a beautiful tree, but it'll create like a hedge type environment. So, so that's it guys. We'll go out and show you my front yard. I haven't even touched my front yard, guys. Got to feed Scrapper Nipper in a minute. Hello, Nipper. So, 